In this video, we discuss how one can calculate the electron and hole densities in graphene. We discuss the carrier statistics in graphene, derive its electronic density of states, and the finite temperature electron and hole carrier densities. Let's begin. The electronic structure of graphene at the two inequivalent kappa and kappa prime valleys can be described by Dirac Kona shown. We refer you to our previous videos on the calculation of the electronic structure of graphene in this series. The energy where the two cones intersect is called the Dirac point, and we have conveniently set the Dirac point energy to be zero. The band above it is called the conduction band, while the band below is the valence band. The energy has a linear dispersion relation written as shown, where h bar is the Planck constant and Vf is the electron Fermi velocity, which is about 300 times smaller than the speed of light in free space. We can simply plot the energy dispersion in terms of the magnitude of the electron wave vector as shown on the right. In the charge neutral graphene, electrons filled up the valence band up to the Dirac point. In solids, the electrons occupies the energy band according to the Fermi-Dirac distribution, F. Hence, F is a number between 0 and 1, denoting 0 or full occupation, respectively. The Fermi energy is the energy where electrons have 50% occupation. At zero temperature, which is the case shown here, electrons fill the bands up to the Fermi energy. We refer you to our video series on statistical distribution law for more in-depth discussion of this topic. When counting the electron density, n, we count the number of occupied states in the conduction band only. In charge neutral graphene, the Fermi energy is located at the Dirac point, with electrons filled up to the Dirac point. Thus, only the electrons in the conduction band are contributing to negatively charged excess electrons, and is what we want to keep track of. Mathematically, we can define the quantity, d, known as the electronic density of states, which measure the number of electronic states at each energy per unit area. The total electron density, n, is then given by weighing the density of states, d, with the electron occupation, f, integrated over the conduction band. On the other hand, if the Fermi energy is in the valence band, it will lead to depletion of electrons which would otherwise be present in the charge neutral case. The depleted electrons would lead to new positive charge. We called an unoccupied electronic state in the valence band a hole, and it has the same charge as an electron, but positive. When counting the hole density, p, we count the number of unoccupied states in the valence band only. Analogous to the electron density, the total hole density, p, is given by weighing the density of states, d, with the hole occupation, 1 minus f, integrated over the valence band. In order for us to proceed, we will first have to derive an expression for d. Let's consider a uniform sheet of graphene with dimension l by l. The spatial part of the electron wave function can be described by the plane wave's form as shown where kx and ky are the in-plane wave vector components. Assuming a periodic boundary condition, the wave vector would have to be chosen such that integer multiple of its wavelength can fit within the graphene. Thus, the electron wavelength should be L divided by m, where m is an integer. The wave vector, which is defined as 2 pi divided by wavelength, is then given as follows, where mx and my are integers. The electronic states are plane waves, each characterized by an in-plane wave vector kx and ky as follows. These wave vectors can only take discrete values spanning the 2D k space. And we can associate an effective k space area for each electronic state, herein denoted by delta, given as 4 pi square divided by L square. Consider graphene at zero temperature, with electrons filled up to the Fermi level in the conduction band. We can define a wave vector associated with the Fermi energy, denoted as kf, 
we see that all electronic states with wave vectors up to kf are occupied. The contour corresponding to kf in the 2D k space is illustrated on the left. Then, the number of electrons in the conduction band is given by the area given by the kf contour, divided by the area of each state, delta. The electron density, n, is just the number of electrons divided by L square. In graphene, there is a total of four Dirac cones, two for the valleys, and two for spins. Accounting for this degeneracy of four, we arrived at our result, n equals to kf square divided by pi. This is the zero temperature electron density in terms of the Fermi wave vector. To derive an explicit expression for the density of states, d, Let's recall again its definition. D is defined as the number of electronic states at a given energy, E, per unit area. At zero temperature, the electron density is simply the integration of D over energy from zero up to the Fermi level. D can then be obtained by taking the derivative of N with respect to E. Substituting in the expression for N we obtained previously, and using the linear dispersion relation of graphene, we arrived at an explicit expression for d as shown. The electronic density of states in graphene is linear in energy E. d is a positive quantity, thus we only take the absolute of the energy. Let's collect the results. We have derived the density of states d. The Fermi-Dirac distribution function, f, is as shown. The electron density, n, is given by the product of f and d, integrated over the conduction band. The whole density, p, is given by the product of 1 minus f and d, integrated over the valence band. The calculations of n and p can be performed numerically. Here, we show the calculated n and p over the typical experimental range of the Fermi energy EF assuming zero temperature. We note that the carrier density of 1 times 10 to the power of 13 per centimeter square corresponds to only 3 electrons for every 1000 carbon atoms. This level of carrier densities is substantially lower than the 1 electron per atom in normal metals like gold. Thus, graphene is at best only a semi-metal. These numerical result for the electron density at zero temperature agrees with our analytical result derived previously. What happens when we increase the temperature to 1000 kelvins? We see that the general shape of the curves look very similar. In the zero temperature case, the carrier densities are zero when EF is zero. However, at such large temperature, we see that there is finite electron and hole densities when EF is at the Dirac point. These finite carrier densities are due to thermal smearing of the Fermi-Dirac distribution function. These thermally excited electron and hole densities can be estimated using the expression shown on the left, which can be derived from Sommerfeld expansion. For those who might be interested, we have also included the method of Sommerfeld expansion, which allow us to derive an analytical expression for the electron density at finite temperature. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.